Sometimes in comics you need to draw the attention of the reader to something specific. Each panel will typically have a focus or a focal point, but you have a few ways to build that depending on the scenario and situation. In Steve Dillon and Garth Ennis's 2000 Punisher run, the Welcome Back Frank arc, that shows us a couple of different ways that you can utilise this, both from a writer and artist perspective. The inspiration was actually this panel from the second issue of the run, in which a character gets run over by this lorry, classic Ennis and Dillon. There's two things happening here, primarily in terms of writing. There's the lorry, hinted at in the previous panel, running him over, and there's the shoe flying in the foreground. Together, they show the character got run over by the lorry. But what's interesting is the blur that presumably colorist Chris Sotomayor places on the lorry, because it gives a sense of movement, but what it also means is the lorry is pushed to the background in terms of focus. So the sharpness of the image and the shoe and the sound effect carries our attention initially, and by doing that, you're putting more emphasis on the object in focus, the flying shoe. This is actually an effect that typically we'll see in film, this is lifted directly out of how a camera would shoot an image, and if we can draw a parallel to the Punisher TV show on Netflix, the first episode has a shot like this. If we hit play, you'll see how really our attention is drawn initially to the bloody hammer, but there's this out of focus imagery in the background too, and it works as a sort of two stage approach. Regardless of what you initially look at, there are two planes of focus splitting your attention. And because there's a physical element that's placing a distinction between the images, as in this sort of digital blur, it's working to put the shoe and the lorry at two different depths. And when you look at the shoe, really all the main information is right there. Blood on a shoe, scuffed marks, flying in the air away from the lorry. It's not just that the lorry is moving fast, but it's that the shoe tells you the story. This guy just got run over. And we're looking at a panel here, so a small part of a smaller part of a page, one item in one panel. And I think that's part of the reason why specifically the background ends up getting blurred beyond using any speed lines as an effect, so that your attention is drawn again to this even smaller element in the frame. Very, very similar again to that Punisher example with the bloody hammer at the foreground. And by doing that, what they're doing is creating focus and attention on a specific item. And that can be really, really important and really useful when you're trying to get across a bit of context but also a bit of story and force a reader to look at something within the context of a wider scene. Again, such as how it works on that Punisher TV example. But it's not the only way, and indeed it's not the only way the team do it in this series. That example looks at focus in a single panel, but let's take a look at that focus on a larger scale. Because there's another trick that happens a page just before this one, which is actually one of my favourite sort of comics moments, and you'll see it very, very often in US comics, particularly superhero comics, and that's to have a feature image across a whole page. Typically, this is going to be a decision from the artist, but it's informed through the script and focal points. Because a good writer will give each page a specific moment and a specific image, and here Ennis gives Dylan this man jumping out of the car at the request of Punisher. And that really is the crux of the page as Dylan draws it, and so rather than just having it be a panel like all the others in the page, such as if we box it in like this, what he's doing is making the whole page the image of the man jumping out of the car, and everything else is in panels, just layered over that same image. By doing that, it gives the impression that that moment expands out beyond all others, almost like a splash page would, by running to the bleed. And you're already seeing this image before you even get to it, because it's sitting around the top two panels, which end up funneling you down the page directly into it, but all that space around those panels is the background of that third image, the key image for the page, and the focal moment for the whole scene. And a good test for something like this is always just to zoom out of the page so we're looking at an almost thumbnail sized version of it and read it. What do we see? What jumps out at us? The feature image across this page very, very clearly does. And by doing that, you put emphasis of the page specifically on that moment beyond anything else. And you tell your reader this moment has more narrative or emotional or, or both weight. And it ties into the way a splash page might be used. Like the title page here with Frank and his flamethrower, the page just showing one specific image. To throw it back to filmic elements, it's reminiscent of how the Punisher TV show might shoot a flashback to, say, Frank's wife in the first episode. One image, one point of focus, even if there are those other details around in the frame, you're very clearly being led to pay attention to one specific thing. And the final example I wanted to show you is kind of a combination of both of those ideas in one. Emphasis within a particular panel, but by limiting the visual information and turning the images into silhouette, and specifically this example here, where the background drops out as well and we're just given the texture. At the top of this page, we get another silhouette panel, but we're also being given establishing information here, and it feels like what we actually need to know from this is just contextual information for the rest of the page, sort of as in where these two characters are on this rooftop. At the bottom, with that contextual information being removed, because we don't need it anymore, so there's no background, then the panel starts to take on some other meaning. If you consider it purely in the way that Dylan likely drew it, it's a blank panel with two shapes. If we ask why, it must be about shape and form and action, because there's nothing else. The focus here has to be on Daredevil's flying kick towards Punisher. 
Because, well, what else is there? It's creating two planes, very much like the first example, the bodies and the void around them, in this case rendered by Sotomayor, to draw specific attention to one plane, the one containing the silhouettes. And lifting from the second example, it's creating a singular focal image in the body of Daredevil and Frank by having absolutely nothing else in the frame take your attention. In much the same way that feature image kind of bleeds out of everything else, so do these two silhouettes kind of make everything else unnecessary. But importantly, I think it's worth noting that all these examples work because they already have context. They're all being set up by the other panels and other moments, which work like a setup to the punchline. For example, you've got that opening panel with the silhouettes, you've got the characters in the car, and you've got the lead into the page before that big splash. These moments are only allowed that power because the reader already understands what's leading to this moment. But Dylan, in his extremely clear and straightforward approach, as we've discussed before on the show, he shows once again why he was a master of visual storytelling. He understands the approach that comics can take to telling a story. And here are three different ways across two issues of this comic that show how he, along with Ennis and Sotomayor, manipulated you as the reader into focusing on what he wanted you to focus on and take away from each scene and page what he wanted you to take away. Each style has their strengths, but it was Dylan who knew how to exploit them. Context detail, removal of detail, and clear focal points. If you can master those, then you can really wrap a reader's head and eyes around what you need them to see and what you need them to take away from the scene. It's a really important tool in the arsenal of a comic book artist, and here, as I say, Dylan really shows you how it's done. Thanks for watching. If you're a fan of Strip Panel Naked, I'd love it if you could check out the Patreon, where for your pledge you get access to tons and tons of extra content every single week, and there's a whole year plus worth of stuff on there already. For more comics talk and analysis, you can find me on Twitter at HassanOE, and of course, hit subscribe and that little notification bell to keep up to date with all the latest episodes, and we will see you next time.